Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and I'm bringing you another battle in the Rated Battle Special VGC 14 Ladder Series, where I climb the online ladder and provide live commentary as they go. Anyway, before I get started with today's video, I just wanted to say a quick thank you. If you haven't realized already, I hit 10,000 subscribers just earlier this afternoon. It's really, really awesome. You guys have been the best fans and best subscribers in the world, and it really means the world to me, and I can't wait to see where else this channel goes. Definitely check out my 10,000 subscriber thank you slash update video, including uh, future video plans and a QA and I plan on doing this Thursday. So ask me any questions you want on that channel. Now let's get started into today's battle. Anyway, since I haven't been able to provide a live commentated video for a while, or a couple of days uh, since yesterday's video was not live commentated, I'm excited to get back onto the grind. Today's team, Moongus, Azumarill Salamence, Aegislash, Rotom Key, and Kangaskhan. I'm going to find an opponent, base 1771, so really high rating from Australia. So let's get right into it. Base's team is going to be Bisharp, Gardevoir, Garchomp, Kangaskhan, Rotom Key, and Salamence. So it looks very familiar to that team that won in Japan a while back. Um, exact same six Pokemon, one that I actually tried out just a while ago. Um... So it should be a really interesting matchup. We both have Rotom Heat and Kangaskhan, and I really hate Kangaskhan mirrors. Um, I was uh, actually about to say before this video started, I would love to try out some new Pokemon, but I haven't found the time to breed any recently. So if you have any Pokemon you'd like to see featured in these series, and, you know, for example, you just bred it and it's level 1, but it has good IVs, you know, please let me know. I'd be happy to trade for something. I have a couple of uh, spare 5 V Pokemon, or if you're kind enough to donate, it'd be really, really awesome. Hit me up in my inbox, and I'll try to get more cool Pokemon featured in this match. Uh, and in this series in general. Anyway, going into this matchup, I really already dislike it because we've both got Kangaskhan, Rotom Heat, and Salamence. Amoongus, not going to really want to deal with his Rotom Heat or his Gardevoir, so it's scary, and I don't want to bring Salamence because he's got the Bisharp. Aegislash looks like he could be very promising in this matchup, but he does have a lot of super effective moves to hit me with. Azumarill definitely scares away that Salamence and Garchomp, but then suffers against the Kangaskhan, the Rotom Heat. Even Bisharp's got that Life Orb or Choice Band, not sure what item my opponent's running, but he's got that, uh, Iron Head. So I definitely don't want to lead with Salamence. Um, I like the Azumarill Kangaskhan lead, so I'm going to go with those two. And I definitely want Aegislash, and I think Amoongus as my last one. But I also want Rotom Heat. Ooh. Alright, let's go Amoongus. Uh, maybe I can do something with the redirecting attacks away. Uh, one thing that I've been having trouble somewhat this season is figuring out what Pokemon to bring in the right amount of time. Team Preview is an essential part of VGC, as I say in every video. If you don't bring the right Pokemon, you can often find yourself in a very tricky situation right from the start. And it, there have been times where people actually just lose games right from the start based off how terrible their lead matchup is. My opponent's going to go with Kangaskhan and Rotom Heat as I go with Kangaskhan and Zumro. Not the best matchup, but not the worst either. I say not the best because even though I do have the super effective Aqua Jet onto that Rotom, uh, I that Rotom can both burn me and Kangaskhan's got fake out and I don't want to get my Kangaskhan burn right from the start. Also don't want to switch out into a Zumro just yet, excuse me, a Moongus just yet, because Rotom of course does have that super effective overheat. Uh, obviously gonna Mega Evolve, but the question is who to fake out. If we're both Jolly Kangaskhan and he, say, wins the speed tie and he fakes out my Azumarill and I fake out his Kangaskhan, I'm gonna be in some trouble. So I'm just gonna go for the Kangaskhan, uh, fake out onto his Rotom, and I actually kind of want to switch in to a Moongus. Yeah, let's go for that play. Uh, that way I can redirect attacks away and hopefully just KO this Rotom Heat with the return. If I do get my fake out first, I should be in a good position, granted, uh, seeing what he does with that Kangaskhan. Though, a smarter play from his part would actually be to not fake out with Kangaskhan, but instead just say Power Up Punch to get an instant plus two. That would help him uh, greatly, but let's see. So I'm going to Mega Evolve first as he's going to Mega Evolve as well, but uh, obviously... Unfortunately, it doesn't indicate anything. Uh, he, we could very well be speed tying here, so I'm not sure whether I'm faster yet or not, but we'll see as I get the fake out off. So I do get the fake out out first, that's good, um, but we'll see whether Kangaskhan did choose to go for the fake out or whether it went just for the power up punch play right away. But Kangaskhan did go for the fake out. Let's see who he targeted. Into the Moongus, so perfect. That turn couldn't have played out really any better as I not only get that Rocky d helmet damage off, but I get my fake out first. Uh, fortunately, it wouldn't have mattered uh, whether I got the fake out off first or not, but... Great turn there, as Rotom Heat actually reveals the Leftovers, interesting item, we often see Citrus Berry on Rotom Heat, but Leftovers is used on this, so this indicates to me that the Gardevoir is actually carrying a Citrus Berry if my opponent did choose to bring Gardevoir. If he didn't, then that's fine, but um, good to know, as uh, the Gardevoir on the original Japanese team, I believe, was actually Choice Specs. so always good information. Here, I'm in a very good position, especially because his Kangaskhan's actually faster than his Rotom Heat, so, for example, Kangaskhan, uh, if he chooses to return, um, Probably won't be able to take out that Amoongus, then any attack Rotom Heat goes for will be redirected right into my Amoongus. I'm going to go for the Power Up Punch here onto Kangaskhan and a Rage Powder. 
I anticipate the Rotom Heat switching here or protecting and perfect, perfect, perfect. Everything is playing out um, the way I wanted to the first couple of turns. So this Rage Powder is not only going to redirect his Power Up Punch or his return onto my Amoongus, but is also going to make him take more damage. And combined with this uh, Power Up Punch damage from uh, that I'm doing, it might actually just KO this Kangaskhan, though it's going to be close. Yeah, that looks like it should be enough to do one third, but let's see. Um, also curious to see whether Kangas- oh, Kangaskhan going for the double edge. Uh, we often see return over double edge, but double edge does do more damage. As you see, you're most likely going to take out my Amoongus, actually. Um, as it does get two hits, and the recoil damage comes after the Rocky Helmet damage. So he's going to be able to safely take out my Amoongus, but I am perfectly content with that turn. Because my, uh, Kangaskhan comes out with a plus two. So I knock out his Mega Kangaskhan while mine is at- sitting at a plus two boost. So, feeling really good about my position. Um, now I know he's got the double dragon in the back. Uh, the Gardevoir or the Bisharp, so there are four Pokemon he could bring in, and out of those four, I have a good matchup against all of them, I'd say most with the Azumarill, I think that gives me the best matchup, especially because Azumarill does threaten the Aqua Jet onto this Rotom, he is going to bring out Garchomp, I'm really happy to see that because I do have the super effective play rough there, and this Rotom he is most likely going to want to just either get KO'd or take the switch out here, um, and that's going to allow me to just pick up a KO here with return as I can play rough the Garchomp. So, first two turns playing out absolutely perfect for me, really pleased with how it went. The Amoongus switching uh, turned out to be a good play, as uh, I got in Amoongus safely. You know, sometimes you do have to bring in Amoongus on a Rotom Heat, but it's all about proper positioning and playing well, and fortunately for me, that's what it happened, so in an excellent position now as I wait for my opponent. But, uh, Garchomp doesn't threaten Azumarill whatsoever, as Rotom Heat is going to switch out here. Let's see what he chooses to switch in, though. Oh, it's going to be that Salamence. Okay, so... Good switch in there as he's going to get the Intimidate with that puke green color. Um, of course, if you guys don't know, I actually love puke green because I use it on my scissor for basically forever. As Garchomp just goes for an Earthquake, should not do too much to me, and I should be able to KO that Salamence with plus one at Kangaskhan. Azumarill should do a hefty amount with Play Rough. He is going to crit my Kangaskhan, but I'm fortunately going to be able to still take that relatively well since Kangaskhan's a beast. I'm going to be able to take out this Salamence comfortably at plus one, um, and that was probably a choice card. Uh, he, the Salamence wouldn't help him too much in this matchup, but it's always good to just pick up KOs here. Play Rough's going to go into this Garchomp. You're, you're going to see it's going to do a heck load of a lot, um, but it is going to get that uh, rough skin, unfortunately. However, that's actually going to help me more than it hurts me because it actually activates my Citrus Berry, so that's always good. And I'm going to take a 3-2 lead. The crit on Kangaskhan actually hurt, but it should not be enough to actually uh, help my opponent win the game. As here, I can just go for another return onto Rotom and a Play Rough. However, if he KOs Kangaskhan, I might be in some trouble, but um, if he doesn't protect with Rotom, I should be able to win the game. I'm also thinking of just Sucker Punching the Garchomp and going for a Aqua Jet onto the Rotom. Now, this is an important turn. I don't want to mess it up. If my opponent goes... Earthquake should not KO Kangaskhan, uh, nor should Dragon Claw. It did a around 100 damage. Let's do some quick math. 100 damage, but that was uh, three halves of what it should have done. So... Uh, not too worried there. It probably should have done only around 60 damage. Uh, 66. So, I think I can go for the return here and the Aqua Jet play. Or the play rough play onto his Garchomp. Let's see what he does. Rodom is going to protect though, okay. So, as long as my Kangaskhan survives here, I should be fine as he is going to go for another Earthquake. Even if it doesn't, I do have Aegislash in the back. Uh, that was probably his only play, but it's a pl I did Alright, oh, but he's gonna crit my Azumarill, fortunately still gonna hang on with just a sliver of HP, so my opponent getting two crits in two turns, but my Pokemon are EV'd in health, and EV'd in much love, and you see here, both of my Pokemon doing work here, as critical hits do not bother them at all, I am able to take out that Garchomp with that play rough, and this game, at this point, should be over, as uh, my Kangaskhan should be able to take out that Rotom with a return, but I do have the Aegislash in the back anyway, to seal the game up for me, but... Yeah, this is a really interesting game in terms of proper positioning because I thought my opponent had a better lead than I, even though I did have the Azumarill. Rotom Heat is really scary to go up against when you have a physical attacker. Um, so the Amoongus switch in definitely helped me a lot, and I should be able to take this game now. I'm going to go for a sub onto Aegislash and a return with that onto Rotom. Return should take it out at plus one, but let's see, as it does a lot. And takes that on the first hit, actually. So, uh, surprising there. But Rotom, obviously not that bulky in terms of defense. I'm going to take a 2-0 win there. Really nice game. Uh, great team by my opponent. Obviously a highly rated player. But uh, uh, relatively no, really no, not much luck. And 
there was actually bad luck against me, but fortunately the crits don't matter too much. I'm really glad that crits are only times 1.5 now instead of times 2. Uh, especially bitter because I lost nationals in the top 16 last year because I got crit 3 times in 4 turns, but that's Pokemon. Great change that they made to 1.5, really happy to see that, it's actually why I ended up winning the game even though my opponent did get two critical hits. And that's it for today's battle guys, you know, uh, always uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, 500 likes is always the go for daily uploads, um, and I'll be doing my best to continue up with that, otherwise I'll see you next time guys, peace, and thanks once again for 10,000 subscribers, you guys really really rock. Alright, see you next time.